Hi everyone, I'm Emma, and this is my story about what can happen when someone gets so jealous of you they try to ruin your life. It all started with my mom. She's a beautiful woman, and I took after her. So when she divorced my dad and we moved to a new town, obviously I started a new school. That's when the trouble began. I became popular very quickly, but not with the girls. It was the boys who went wild for me, and it drove me crazy. I just wanted a normal life with some nice friends, and it wasn't my fault my mom had passed her beauty down to me. Anyway, there was one girl in particular called Anna who was having none of it. She was also pretty, but she was seriously jealous of me from day one. I remember that first week hearing some girls whispering in the bathroom that I was prettier than Anna. And then Anna walked in, and she looked like she wanted to scream. After that, she went out of her way to destroy my life. At my old school, I'd been a cheerleader, so I signed up to join at this new school. Little did I know, Anna was head cheerleader. She pretended to be all nice to me at practice. Then, at the first football game we were performing and going through our routine, which Anna had choreographed, she made me go at the top of the pyramid, balancing on top of. Everyone. I was so nervous, but I knew I could do it. Anyway, as I was climbing up there, I suddenly saw Anna whisper to the girl next to her, and then she moved, and the whole pyramid started to fall. She obviously wanted to hurt me, but it backfired, and we all fell on top of her. All we heard was a scream as her arm snapped. Afterwards, she told everyone I was clumsy, and it was all my fault. But I knew she'd planned it, so I'd be the one to get hurt. And that's not all. Prom was coming up, and my mom had made me the most beautiful long silk dress. I felt like a princess and couldn't wait to see what everyone would think. Of course, Anna was also wearing a beautiful dress, but everyone was staring at me. I saw her roll her eyes, and then when I was dancing with two of my friends, I felt something rip. I looked behind me, and Anna was standing on my dress. I couldn't believe it. I tried to move, but she wouldn't budge, and it wouldn't stop ripping. Suddenly, I was standing there with a mini dress, and I wanted to cry. But then my friend quickly got some scissors and kneaded it up, and believe it or not, it actually looked even cooler than before. <laughs> Once again, Anna tried to make me look like a fool, but it all fell on her. Everyone was so impressed with my dress, and I even started a new trend wearing mini dresses to prom. However, despite all these silly pranks, there was one thing that Anna had that I didn't—a boyfriend. She was dating Isaac, one of the top athletes in school, and any time she was with him and saw me, she would always smirk and look me up and down as if to say she had a boyfriend and I didn't. I didn't care for her silly competitiveness, though. I wasn't even bothered about being single. All I wanted was for her to leave me alone. Pretty soon, we became like enemies. I just couldn't stand her and her annoying behaviors. But then things got worse. One weekend, my mom drove me to a game and insisted on staying to watch my cheerleading performance. Later, I spotted her chatting with some men, and she looked like she was having a good time. I was happy to see her smile that brightly after a long time. And as expected, not long after that, she introduced him to me. But you won't believe who it was. It turned out he was Anna's dad, out of all people on earth. And worse still, they were now hopelessly in love and even wanted to get married. Oh no! If I knew who he was, I would have broken them up from the start. I couldn't be Anna's stepsister. This was my worst nightmare. And when Anna found out about this, she started to treat me even worse. One time, I was walking in the canteen when suddenly someone pushed me. I went flying and ended up bumping into a boy who fell over too. It was so sore, but the pain quickly disappeared when I realized who the boy was. It was Liam, the new hot guy who just joined the athletes club. I kept apologizing to him, but he just laughed and said it was okay. Then helped me get up and took me to the nurse's office to make sure I wasn't hurt. Afterwards, he even asked for my number. I couldn't believe it. I was actually blushing over a boy. Then I went back to the canteen, and there was Anna staring at me, all angry. I didn't even have to think twice about who'd push me. Obviously, Anna. Well, thanks to her silly prank, now I had a cute guy interested in me, and for once, I was actually interested in him too. 
It didn't take long before we became a couple, and then we were pretty much attached at the hip. I also joined his athlete's practice, and because Isaac was there too, Anna was always there as well. She just glared at me with dagger eyes whenever she saw me. I didn't get what her problem was. Anyway, one time, the athletes club suggested we all go see a movie, with girlfriends included. In the theater, Anna sat behind me and kept kicking my chair. I turned over and asked her to stop, but she wouldn't. I could feel the anger welling up inside me and I thought I was going to explode, but I didn't want to embarrass myself in front of Liam. So, I decided I needed to stay as far away from Anna as possible. That wasn't easy though. Our school had organized a big athletes competition with another school and so Liam was always practicing. I always sat in the stands and watched him and on the day of the competition Anna came and sat next to me. I almost froze. What was she up to? Instead of pulling some prank she handed me a bottle of water and said hey Emma I don't want to be your enemy anymore. We're basically going to be sisters so let's just make up okay? Then she turned to me and smiled shyly. Whoa well that was a surprise. I felt relieved though and said, I thought this day would never come. I hated things being all awkward between us. Anna just smiled at me again. And then we came down to the field where Isaac and Liam were warming up for the race to wish them luck. Finally, the competition began. Anna and I sat together, cheering our boyfriends on. As expected, Liam won first prize and Isaac came in second. I was so happy for Liam and ran out to the field to hug him. But suddenly, some of the organizers approached him and escorted him off the field. I had no idea what was going on, but I saw Anna smirking at me and then walking away. What was that for? After a while, the organizers came back and said Liam had been caught doping. So now the first prize would go to Isaac. What? There was no way Liam would do something illegal like that. He'd never used any kind of substance to perform well. He was just naturally talented. Everyone started saying mean things about Liam and I couldn't bear it. So I went to find him. I saw him sitting in the corner of the locker room looking shocked. When he saw me, he shook his head and said, I didn't use doping. You have to believe me, Emma. I'm not that kind of guy. All I did was drink the water you gave me. Oh my god, the water bottle! Anna had given it to me and I must have passed it on to Liam to hydrate before the competition. I thought she was being nice, but of course she wasn't. This was Anna we were talking about. She'd planned this. She was seriously too much. I ran to find her and I was raging. She was happily talking to the other athletes, so I grabbed her wrist and pulled her away. How could you? Are you trying to ruin Liam's life? I yelled at her. Anna wasn't even bothered. She just smirked and said, Yup, I am, and so what? I was shaking by that point, and I said, You're crazy! Why did you do it? What has Liam ever done to you? I did it because I hate you. You stole everything from me, including Liam. Huh? I was so confused. Since when did Anna like Liam? Well, Isaac appeared at the exact moment, and he obviously heard what she said. He started shouting, you told me you did that to help me win, but no, you're a complete liar, so you're just jealous of Emma, huh? Okay then, now you can run after Liam as you wish, we're over. Anna was shocked and tried to explain that she'd done it for him, that he was misunderstanding her, but he wouldn't even look at her. He said, you won't get away with this, Anna. I'm gonna tell the organizers right now. Anna tried to get him to stop, but he pushed her away, and she ended up falling onto the ground where she burst in tears. Ha! She deserved it. I went back to find Liam and the organizers announced that there were some problems with the results and that the competition would be repeated the following weekend. Liam looked so happy and hugged me. Everything worked out in the end. Well, at least for Liam and me. Liam still won first place and now he's going to compete in the international competition. As for Anna and Isaac, well, they broke up and Anna moved to another city with her mom and Isaac got kicked out of the athletes club. On another note, my mom and Anna's dad are getting married soon, and even though I can't stand Anna, I'm still going to go because it'll mean a lot to my mom. At least I don't need to live in the same house as Anna. She's got to be the most jealous person I've ever met, and it's not done her any good. Envy really is poison. It's much better to just be happy with what you have right now, right? 
I gripped onto the swing chains and stared down at my feet. Someone was walking over. It was Lydia. What's up? She asked as she sat on the swing next to me. Hey. I managed a weak smile. It's probably nothing. It's just, my parents have been arguing a lot. Then this morning, Mom smelt some unfamiliar perfume on Dad's shirt and accused him of cheating. Is he really having an affair? Lydia rubbed my shoulder. No way! Your dad probably just got caught in a spray mist cloud at the department store or something. You shouldn't jump to conclusions that quickly. Your dad loves your mom. Anyone can see that, so don't worry. I mumbled a yeah in agreement. My name's Cora, and as corny as it sounds, before this incident, I had been pretty satisfied with my life. I'm attending a renowned university. I get along really well with my parents, and despite being an only child, I've never felt lonely, as I have my best friend, Lydia, for company. She's more of a sister to me. Regardless of the problem, I just needed to drop her a message, then we'll meet at our spot, which is the swings at the park. Yep, I had it all, and I thought nothing would ever change that. It turns out that I was wrong. So it all began with my dad. He was acting oddly. He often looked at his phone, then smiled to himself. And then he'd take his phone into the bathroom and not come out for ages. This didn't go unnoticed by mom, but when she asked him about it, he just shrugged and said that he had some problems with his digestion. Then, while mom was doing the laundry, she smelt an unfamiliar perfume on his shirt. She marched over to him, threw the shirt at his head, and demanded that he explained himself. Dad denied it and said it was probably just his work colleague's perfume and that she was overreacting. That's why I arranged to meet Lydia at our spot. And as usual, she was so sweet and supportive. Lydia was right. Maybe I had thought too much. I came home and caught mom crying in the kitchen. She looked at me with puffy eyes and said, Something isn't right. I just know it. He doesn't look at me like he used to. I sat down, hugged her and said, Mom, let's stop overthinking. I trust dad. He'll never betray us. I stayed to comfort her for a while, then eventually she calmed down. The next evening, Dad came home with a big bouquet of blue roses, Mom's favorites. Then he cooked dinner for us both as an apology for making us sad. Mom looked touched, and she also apologized for misunderstanding him. I told myself that things would be okay now, right? For the next few weeks, Mom and Dad seemed to be fine, but then, on my mom's birthday... We invited Lydia and her mom Josie over for dinner. My mom was busy in the kitchen, so I took the birthday gift off of Josie for her. That's when I smelt it. Her perfume! It was the same scent that had been on Dad's shirt. I was sure of it! Over dinner, I noticed that Josie kept on looking over at my dad and laughed at all of his dumb jokes. Oh god, was my dad having an affair with my best friend's mom? I felt like I'd explode, but I couldn't say anything to Lydia, as I didn't want to upset her. So I'd do my best to avoid my best friend until I figured things out. This worked for a few days, but then one day after a class, she rushed over to me and said, Cora, why are you avoiding me? I pretended not to hear her and kept on walking, but she grabbed my arm and continued. Did I do anything wrong? Will you please just tell me? I spilled out. I'm pretty sure that my dad's having an affair with your mom. At first, she looked shocked, but then she hugged me and kept on apologizing. It was all too much for me, and I burst into tears in her arms. She told me that she'd talk to her mom and find out what was going on. The next day, I met Lydia at our spot. She looked super awkward, then said, It's true. My mom had a month-long affair with your dad but she promised that it's over. My world came crashing down around me. I just couldn't believe it. Lydia hugged me and told me it'd be okay. I was so lucky to have such an awesome friend like her. We both decided it'd be best not to tell my mom. The affair was over, so why break my mom's heart now? I tried carrying on like normal, and for the next few weeks, it really felt like everything was okay. Dad was really sweet with mom, and he even surprised her with a posh dinner out. But then, one afternoon, 
I saw Dad pacing the garden. He was on the phone with someone, and I heard him say, Okay, I'm coming now. Then he got into his car and drove off. I decided to follow him, and it soon became clear where he was going. He pulled up in front of Josie's house and then walked straight inside without knocking. My heart sank, so he was still seeing her. Without a second thought, I called Mom and blurted out, Mom, Dad's having an affair with Josie. I'm there now. Come and join me and we'll confront them together. Five minutes later, my mom showed up. She looked both sad and furious. We went straight to the front door and banged on it, and I yelled out, Open up! We both know about your dirty relationship! But suddenly, someone spoke behind us. Hey, Laura. Cora. Is everything okay? We turned around and saw Josie standing there with a grocery bag in her hand. I was about to tell Josie to stay away from my dad when Lydia opened the door and gave us confused looks. What are you doing here? Oh, do you want your dad? He's fixing the dishwasher. Then Josie said, Lydia, I told you to call a plumber out to fix it. The plumber said he was fully booked today, so I think that I could ask Mr. Roberts for help. She replied, Oh no! So it turns out I'd misunderstood what was happening and messed everything up. Suddenly, my dad appeared in the doorway and said to us, What's all this banging and shouting about? Right, we're all going home now to talk. As soon as we got home, dad waved his arms about in anger, then yelled at mom, You're crazy, jealous, and unreasonable, and I can't be around you anymore. I felt so bad. This was my fault, not mom's. So I tried explaining this to dad, but he just told me it wasn't my business and continued to shout at mom. At first, mom just sat there silently, but then she quietly said, Is it any wonder I act how I do? I mean, you have been having an affair with my friend. Right, if you keep on being this ridiculous, then let's divorce. Then he stormed off. It was horrible. Now mom was inconsolable, and I felt awful for telling her. That night, I messaged Lydia to meet up, but she called me instead. She told me that she'd called my dad to ask him for the plumber's phone number, but he said that he'd come and fix it. She also said that Josie and him really were over. Then she hung up. This was kind of odd, but I suppose Lydia was finding it tricky being stuck in the middle of things with her mom and me. I guess I just needed to give her some space until things cooled down. After that, mom and dad barely said a word to each other. Talk about tense. Then, one day, mom decided to move to my grandparents for a few weeks, as she needed time to think everything through. I didn't blame her, but I didn't want to stay home alone with dad, so I went and stayed with a college friend. One night, I came home to pick up some clean clothes when I saw it for myself. My dad was kissing her on the couch. I couldn't believe my eyes. He was such a liar. So I coughed to clear my voice, then said, Oh, so it's over, is it? They both looked up at me, and that's when my eyes met with hers. Only it wasn't Josie. Nope, it was Lydia. She stammered out, Cora, why, why are you here? What? Lydia? So my dad had been having an affair with Lydia? How could the girl who was always there for me through high school breakups, bad grade mishaps, and growing pains do this to me? Then dad put his arm around her and told me everything, that he had never had any affair with Josie. It was Lydia all along, and that they were in love and wanted to get married. It was all too much for me, so I rushed out of there. Lydia ran after me and called out my name. Then when she caught up with me, she grabbed my arm. Cora, wait, I, I want to explain. Your dad and I... I interrupted her. Why lie? Why say it was your mom? I'm sorry. I just wasn't ready for everyone to find out then. So I sprayed my perfume on my mom and made up the story that she'd admitted to having an affair with him. As for the dishwasher thing, well, I set that up as I knew you'd follow your dad and call your mom. I feel bad, but your mom needs to know. He doesn't love her. He loves me. I jerked my hand away and shouted, You're such a liar! You don't deserve to be my friend, 
and you can't have him. He's with my mom. Suddenly, she changed her attitude, smirked at me and said, Cora, let's accept the truth. Your dad is bored of your mom. Actually, I'll be your stepmother soon, my little daughter. Then she left. I had jello legs, and I was so overwhelmed that it made me feel dizzy. So I sat on the curb and tried to calm myself down. Then I called mom and told her everything. She cried a lot, but she thanked me for telling her the truth. After that, mom came home and told dad she wanted a divorce. Then she demanded that he move out. This was six months ago, and it's been hard, but mom and I are getting there. I haven't spoke to dad or Lydia since, although I've heard that they're living together. I know I can't avoid them forever, but I just don't know if I'll ever be able to forgive them. For now, I'm staying strong for mom and helping her through this. Then maybe one day in the future, if they contact me, I'll be ready to meet them and maybe, eventually, find it in myself to let them back into my life. You see that sad girl sitting there in a flood of tears? Yeah, I know, she's pretty hard to miss. Well, that was me a few months ago. My boyfriend had literally just broken up with me, and I had to pack my stuff out of his place ASAP with a resentful heart. But thinking back, if he hadn't broken my heart, I wouldn't have fallen into this super awkward and ridiculous situation. Oh, I forgot. I'm Ava. I'm 22, and I suck at love. So, anyway, after crying like a newborn, I realized I needed a trip away to free my mind, just like Julia Roberts' character did in the movie Eat, Pray, Love. But I could only afford to do the low-budget version. So, I went on Airbnb and found a reasonably priced room to rent in this idyllic beach house. And it gets even better. The owner, Hazel, is out most of the time so it would be like renting the whole house with the price of one room. Awesome! Reserved! I needed to get out of this emotional hellhole ASAP. As expected, Hazel wasn't home when I arrived, and I had to find the hidden key under a plant pot by the door and let myself in. And, oh my, it was like stepping into a life-size retro dollhouse. From the chic furniture to the funky wallpaper, I loved it here. This Hazel girl has got some taste. Ooh, there was even a record player. If I'd have known, I would have brought my vinyls with me. But hey, her collection wasn't too shabby. I have to admit that the idea of having a cool friend like this Hazel girl sounded pretty awesome. I was determined to actually meet her. Because, yeah, it's been five wonderful days staying here, and I still haven't run into her. So, one night, I settled down in the living room and watched a movie while waiting for her to come home. She eventually showed up at 2 a.m., Ugh, this girl wasn't kidding about coming home late. I greeted her and said, Hey, I saw you have an exacta 35mm film camera. That's so cool. Also, um, would you mind if I take a look at your vinyls? She looked a bit confused and replied, I have a what? Oh, you mean those rusty old things? They're my brothers. I doubt he'd mind. He always talks to me nonstop about them. So, I think he'd be happy there's someone in this house who speaks the same language as him. Ha! <laughs> oh, they're her brothers? How very interesting. This got me thinking. Is he handsome? And what about his personality? Is he an arty type with a kind soul? Daydreaming about this mystery guy became a regular occurrence for me. Oh gosh, was I crushing on a guy I'd never even met? How desperate was I? One day, I came home from grocery shopping. I was totally exhausted, so I threw the groceries in the kitchen and jumped straight onto the pile of blankets on my bed. Only, it wasn't just the simple blankets. What? Someone was under them! We banged heads! Ouch! I removed the blankets to catch this pervert out. Huh? I know this guy. It was my ex! What in God's name was he doing here? For the record, this wasn't my current ex. This was Nolan. We used to date back in high school, but I'd not spoken to him in a long time. So, it turns out, he's Hazel's mystery brother. Ew. 
This whole time, I'd been accidentally crushing on my jerky ex-boyfriend. This made sense now, as we always did have lots in common, but ugh, thank you universe for ruining my vacation. With a dagger stare, I asked him why he had the audacity to be napping in my bed. He snorted, then said, your bed? This is my house, in my room. The question is, what are you doing here? Reluctantly, I explained everything to him, and it turns out he was meant to be away on a two-month business trip, so Hazel put his room on Airbnb without asking him. The problem being, he came back early. He just shrugged and said, But I'm home now, so can you please take your stuff and get out of here? I'll get Hazel to refund you or whatever. This made me mad. I'd paid for the room. I had rights, so I was staying put. So I told him, I'm not going anywhere. You'll just have to sleep on the couch. He didn't seem happy about it. In fact, he grumbled to himself as he left the room. But at least he left. I thought this would be it, but oh how wrong I was. And that's when the war for the bedroom began. The next morning, I awoke to hear these weird squawking noises. Then I felt something flap in my face. Sleepily, I tried to whack it away and opened my eyes. Staring back at me was this massive gull. Ugh! Nolan! There were about a dozen of them hanging out in my room, all pecking and flapping around my stuff. It took me over an hour to shoo them out of the window. Afterward, I was so mad that I locked myself in the bathroom. After 30 minutes, Nolan thudded on the door. He urgently needed to use it. I opened the door with a smirk on my face and brushed past him. I soon heard his disgruntled shouts. Yep, I'd wrapped the toilet paper with duct tape. Ha! I wasn't done with him yet, so that evening I hid some cookie crumbs on the couch, and he woke up the next day covered in ant bites. He was like a real-life dot-to-dot. <laughs> yes, it's 2-1, loser. This went on for a couple of days. Nolan switched the toaster settings so my breakfast was ruined. Yuck. So I sneakily downloaded a fake cracked screen app on his phone and placed it on the floor. When he picked up his phone, he totally freaked out and started blaming his dog. It was so funny. All this pranking was exhausting, so I was kind of relieved when Nolan went out one night and I could just chill on the couch and watch a movie. Suddenly, the power went out. Great. The switch must have tripped or something. I put on the torch on my phone and was about to go and check it out when my phone rang. All I could hear was someone deep breathing into it. What the hell? I hung up and my body started to shake. All of a sudden, the door burst open and Ghostface was standing there. Terrified, I held my head and screamed like a banshee. But then I heard somebody call my name. Ava, Ava! It's me, Nolan. It's okay. I was so relieved to see him that I jumped into his arms and cried into his sweater. Please don't cry. I've got you, he said in a soft voice while he held me. I felt so secure and safe. Um, what was that he was holding in his hand? It was a ghost face mask. It was him. He knew I hated horror movies. What a jerk. I pushed him away and shouted, What the hell? Are you crazy? He just smiled and replied, It was worth it, because the hug was so sweet. Man, I hate this jerk. After that, I avoided him. So, okay, I did catch myself looking over at him and getting this weird, warm feeling. One time, he was playing with his dog on the beach, and I watched on from the porch. Did I have a crush on my ex? My god, I hope not, cause that would be pathetic. But I had to admit that, although his pranks were really annoying, they'd also been kind of fun. It made me reminisce on the old days when we were together, and we were so happy back then. But nothing lasts forever. <sighs> Hazel appeared with two cups of coffee, and we started chatting. I told her how annoying her brother was. She laughed, then replied, I know, sorry. I didn't know you guys used to date. I wouldn't have rented the room to you if I had. I get that it must be awkward for you, especially as you were the one who broke up with him, right? I did what? He was the one who broke up with me because he was moving away at the time. 
and couldn't handle the long-distance relationship. And worse, he did it over a freaking letter! She looked at me confused, then said, Oh, that's peculiar, as he told me he wrote you a letter telling you about his feelings. Then you shouted at him that it was over. I replied, Part of his letter said, I love you and all, but this long-distance stuff is, like, madly scary. So it kind of seemed obvious to me that he wanted to end things. She shook her head. No, I swear he just wanted to tell you how much he loved you. But obviously, my dearest brother totally sucks at writing. What an idiot. I told him he should have let me proofread his dumb love letter. So it turns out our breakup had all been a misunderstanding. I mean, come on, who writes love letters anymore? Anyway, the past was the past, so I decided it was best to leave it there. Besides, I only had a few days left here. On my last day, I packed my things and said goodbye to Hazel. I had to admit that I was really going to miss it here. Nolan was nowhere to be found. He must be celebrating because he finally had his room back. Whatever, it's not like I needed to say goodbye to him. I took a cab to the train station. On the way, I couldn't shake Nolan out of my head. He needed to know the truth about the breakup. I couldn't let him think that I was a cruel person back then. Stop! Turn around! I shouted out to the cab driver. I ran back into the house. Hazel stared at me in shock. Er, why aren't you at the train station? Oh, wow. I couldn't believe they wanted to get rid of me so fast. I was about to leave when Hazel continued. Nolan just took a cab there to talk to you. Let me call him. Nolan answered the phone and asked me to meet him at a lighthouse nearby. Oh gosh, I was so nervous. What did he want to tell me? Maybe Hazel had told him about our convo the other morning. I spotted him. He was holding something. Gee, I hoped it wasn't another letter. He blushed while looking at me. Then he said in a shy voice, I, um, you forgot something in my room. Then he handed me a bag. I opened it, and there was my lingerie! Oh, great! How could I forget them? So he wasn't going to tell me anything. But wait a minute. These weren't mine, and they still had the tags on. He giggled and said, Sorry, I swear that was the last prank. I just needed a reason to see you. Hazel told me everything. I don't blame you for our breakup. I blame my poor writing skills. The point is, I love you. I just love you. You're the only girl I've ever loved. Still to this day, I've never loved anyone else. Oh gosh, I couldn't believe it. Although I was pretty sure he'd just quoted that from a movie or series or something. As we all know, he sucks with words, and it sounded familiar. Anyway, I threw the bag of lingerie in his face and then wrapped my arms around him. So, from then on, the room war stopped. Not because I was leaving, but because we became roommates. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Actually, there's not much to tell. Only, when your boyfriend writes you a letter, please make sure you read it very carefully. Actually, scrap that. Just tell him to get with the times and to text you. Hey, that guy over there just asked for your info, the bartender said, which made me turn and look around. Oh, he's gone. As you can see, I'm sitting at the bar of a five-star resort. No, I'm not rich. Instead, I took out all my savings and decided to splurge them on enjoying every single last day left of my life. It all started months ago. I had this constant aching and exhaustion, I blamed work stress, but my symptoms grew worse. Eventually, I went to the doctor and sat there in stunned shock as I heard the words cancer and progressive. The next few weeks were a whirlwind of hospital appointments and treatments. I had chemo and my lovely long hair fell out. I just felt tired and hopeless all of the time. Enough had I had this. I stopped the chemotherapy, quit my job, and decided to enjoy the little time I had left. The Hawaiian beach is so beautiful. 
Then suddenly, someone walked straight into me. Ugh, their drink soaked me. I heard them say, Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Oh, hey, you're the girl who sat alone at the bar earlier. I looked up, and wow, he was handsome. I shook my head and insisted it was my fault for not paying attention. After that, he joined me for a walk, and we started chatting. Oh, his name's Blake, by the way. So, the next day, I asked him out for lunch. I don't have much of an appetite these days, and the most I could do was staring down at my barely-touched plate. Then, I knew I needed to be honest with him. Hey, Blake, I really like you, and want to get to know you more, but I have cancer and don't have long left. At first, there was a sickening silence, but then he took my hand, and can you believe it? He said he wanted to get to know me, too. The next few weeks with him were magical. Then we came back to the city and continued dating. Blake was so amazing and constantly showered me with love. One night after dinner, Blake drove us up to this hill. He said he wanted to show me Orion's belt, and it was so romantic. I didn't want to ruin the moment, but there was something I needed to tell him. Blake... I saw the doctor today. He said that nothing has changed. Although he didn't mention it, I guess I don't really have much time left. My tears streamed down my face. I've had the best time with you. I really do think I love you. Suddenly, Blake got down on one knee and asked me, My darling Lucy, will you marry me? This is the least I can do for you. I was speechless, so I nodded and then held him tightly in my arms. I was too happy. I couldn't help sharing our love story on social media. Soon, thousands of people were liking and sharing it, saying what an inspirational couple we were. This was crazy, but amazing. Their support made me feel like I could take on my cancer, the world, everything. I started noticing that Blake was getting a lot of attention from other girls. They knew he was the guy who proposed to the dying girl, so they seemed to flock around him and admire him. Then one day, when we were at the wedding dress store together, I stepped out of the fitting room in this beautiful gown, feeling like a princess. But then I spotted Blake talking to some other girl. She touched his shoulder, and I overheard her say, your fiancé is very lucky to have you. Then she leaned in closer to him. Blake? I hissed at him. Baby, how do I look? He turned away from the girl and stared at me. Yeah, gorgeous. He awkwardly smiled. I couldn't help but feel terrible. I know he's an attractive man, but he was about to marry me. It was not nice at all having him flirt with someone else at my dress fitting. Still, I tried to put it all aside, as I wanted to enjoy what little time I had left. The wedding was a dream come true. It was such a magical day. Then right before our honeymoon, I went to see my doctor. To my complete and utter shock, he told me, I'm pleased to inform you that you're in recovery. Oh my god, I couldn't believe my ears. I was getting better? I rushed home and told Blake the good news. Only his reaction wasn't what I expected. His face dropped, and at first he was speechless. Then he stuttered, c c c Congrats, honey. Hmm, what did that even mean? Regardless of this, our honeymoon was marvelous. My appetite was back, and I was making the most of it. Yum! Food tastes so good. This didn't go unnoticed by Blake, and he tutted, can you try chewing more gently? Whatever. I was intent on enjoying my food. When we arrived back home, I moved into his apartment. For God's sake, there were dirty plates and smelly socks everywhere. How could someone so meticulous about their looks live in such a state? I told myself that it was fine. I loved him, so I could learn to love his mess. <sighs> Being alive felt so good. So admittedly, I may have overdone it on the snacks, cake, meals out, and yeah, I'd gained some extra pounds, so household chores were a bit too much for me. 
Besides, why should I have to do them? It was his mess. But one time, when I was sick of his stinky underpants everywhere, I asked him, how can a guy who looks like you live in this rat hole? Go clean up. But he ignored me and went straight to bed. And it took no time for his loud thunder snores to follow. What the hell? Where was the kind, charming man I married? Fed up, I tried my best to clean up the place a little bit. I was out of breath and sweating a lot. My head was super itchy, so I took off my wig and scratched my scalp. At that moment, I heard Blake screaming, and when I turned around, he was clutching his face in fear. Baby, what's wrong? I rushed to him. Oh, I got it. I laughed out. It was just too uncomfortable to wear this wig, so I took it off. That's all? But look, my hair is growing back again. Shaking, he stuttered. You were wearing a wig this whole time? You look terrifying. Well, yeah, I suppose jagged growing hair made me look quite creepy. (laughs) Shouldn't you be happy for me? I mumbled and forced a smile while trying to put the wig back on. Knowing that I was able to live life again was incredible. But living Blake with my moody, uncaring husband now, that wasn't so great. One evening, he came home from work in a foul mood and started shouting at me for not tidying up. I told him I shouldn't have to, as it wasn't my mess. He scowled at me. I single-handedly provide for the both of us. Come home to see you chilling on your huge backside, and you dare talk to me like that? You're the one who needs to get up and work, since you eat double the amount I do. His words hurt. So with teared up eyes, I said to him, How dare you talk to me like that? Blake was about to say something, but he paused, then just sighed. Look, I'm sorry, babe. I know you're recovering. I sharply stared at him and said, I didn't do anything for dinner, so let's eat out. I was enjoying my rotary chicken. It was so good that I might have taken too big of a bite, and it lodged in my throat. Soon I was choking, I couldn't breathe, afraid I looked at Blake for help, but he was scrolling through his phone, and to my disbelief he walked off to the bathroom. I kept thudding the table to call for help. Luckily a waiter rushed over and hit me real hard on the back, and I managed to spit the piece of chicken out. When Blake returned, I angrily asked, how the hell could you leave me like that? What are you talking about, baby? I saw you enjoying your food. Are you done? Let's go home. Ugh! He definitely knew I was choking. What a jerk. Everything I once thought and expected from him shattered. He was willing to let me choke to death over helping me. The problem was our love story was so famous now. And even though I knew Blake and I couldn't bear each other, the thought of us breaking up and being heckled by others made me feel so sick. I guess I was stuck with him forever. So we had to continue tolerating each other. Then one evening, while I was munching on potato chips and watching TV, my phone rang. It was a strange number. Hello? Are you Blake's wife? Blake's been in a car accident, and we really need you to come here. I froze for a few seconds. Sorry, wrong number, and hung up. My phone rang several more times, but I didn't answer. The guilt started to creep up on me, so I grabbed my bag and rushed to the hospital. The nurse told me to sign some papers so Blake could have his surgery. With a pen in hand, I hesitated. Excuse me, where is the organ donating section? I asked. My husband is willing to donate if anything bad happens. This is not the right time to ask me that question, the nurse yelled at me. Right at that moment, Blake's parents rushed in panicking. I gave them the papers and sneaked back to the apartment. After that, I thought long and hard about our relationship. It had been so passionate at first, but I realized I didn't love him at all, and neither did he. All our decisions were made intensely quickly, based on the idea that I might die later. We were too stubborn to admit defeat and walk away, and now we were miserable. A few weeks later, Blake came home in a wheelchair, and we both sat in awkward silence. Then I broke the ice. That night, when I choked at the restaurant, did you ignore me on purpose? Blake answered me with another question. Is it 
true you wanted to donate my organs instead of helping me get my surgery? I replied, I'm sorry. That was the only way I could briefly think of to get out of this marriage. He sighed. I know. Me too. I think we're just too similar, and that's why we don't work. He paused. I think it's time we put an end to this. So finally, we stopped putting up with each other and filed for a divorce. People on social media were furious and posted a lot of venomous comments, such as, so much for being an inspirational couple, and this screams out scam marriage to me. I decided to close all of my online accounts. Their opinions don't matter anymore. I have my family's support. That's more important. Surprisingly, I'm still friends with Blake. Hey, we went through a lot together, and he's not all bad. I just never want to live with him ever again. <laughs> I even met my current boyfriend through Blake, as he introduced me to him. How funny is that? Sometimes things don't work out as planned, but that's okay. Living a lie just to save a bruised ego is much worse. Oh, by the way, this is my real hair. I am now completely healthy. Remember, you only live once, so make sure you don't waste your time trying to please others, and instead, you embrace life and live it at its best. Hi, that's me, Maxine hiding behind some bushes and spying on a girl. Don't get me wrong, I don't have a crush on her, nor am I a total psychopath. I'm just doing a favor for my mate Damon. But if I'd known how crazy this was all going to get, I'd never have agreed to help him. It all started when Damon fell in love with this girl Sophie. She had this mysterious charm that made him want to talk to her right away. And he did. She didn't even glance at him. She just walked away. Ouch. I didn't like her one bit. She was so stuck up. But Damon didn't give up that easily. He tried all kinds of tricks to get her attention, even waiting for the bus with her even though he had a car. Nothing worked, though, and this made him miserable. He begged for my help, but I said, No way! Then he said, Aw, oh, come on, Maxine, you're a girl, so just befriend her or something. Maybe you can find out what she likes, her fave foods, music, etc. Then I can try to impress her. Please, I'm begging you. I'll even lend you my Nintendo Switch for a month if you agree. You can't say no to that. He had me at that. I'd do anything to get a Nintendo Switch. Fine, it's a deal. But don't blame me if it doesn't work. So, after class that day, I searched for Sophie. She was at the bus stop, and I was about to approach her when suddenly she walked away. I decided to follow her, and on the way, she stopped to help an old lady cross the road. Wow, I was surprised. For someone with such a cold face, she had a pretty warm heart. Hmm, maybe she wasn't so bad after all. After that, she started walking towards the park, and by then, it was starting to get dark. What was she doing? She sat down on a bench in a creepy part of the park, almost like she was waiting for someone— I hid behind a bush so she wouldn't see me, but I was totally freaked out. Suddenly, two guys appeared and started talking to her, but they didn't seem like her acquaintances. Oh my gosh, she looked panicked. I had to help. I quickly shouted, Help! Officer! Please help! There are two guys bothering us! Obviously, there was no officer, but it worked. The two guys ran off, and I rushed over to make sure Sophie was okay. She was surprised to see me, but then she hugged me and thanked me for saving her. Her whole body was shaking. She must have been terrified. I walked with her back to our dorm, and she told me how she liked to come to the park at night because it was so peaceful. I told her it was clearly dangerous and that she probably shouldn't go alone anymore. Then we exchanged numbers, and after that we became quite close. Close enough. That was a few days later I told her Damon had a big crush on her— and asked if she'd maybe go on a date with him, but she just shook her head and said she wasn't ready. Her eyes looked sad, so I didn't push it any further. Maybe she'd just gone through a bad breakup? I didn't ask her again, but one night I was heading to her dorm for a movie night when I heard two people fighting. 
It was Sophie and some guy, and she was crying. It looked like the guy was about to hit her, so I ran over and said, Hey, what the heck do you think you're doing? Leave her alone or I'll call the cops. He just laughed at me and said to Sophie, We're not done yet. Then he stormed off. I asked Sophie if she was okay and who that guy was. Then she told me how he was her ex and that he kept trying to get back together with her, but she wasn't interested. As she told me this, she started to cry and said, Because of him, I've become so scared and anxious. I'm even too scared to sleep at night. I felt so sorry for her and told her I was here for her and that she could call me anytime. Well, maybe I shouldn't have said that because that's exactly what she started doing. Every night she'd call me and we'd end up chatting until 3 a.m., I was so exhausted, but I wanted to help her. She seemed so anxious all the time. Damon knew we chatted a lot, but he'd stopped asking about Sophie. It seems he'd lost interest and was more worried about me looking like a zombie from The Walking Dead. You seriously need some sleep, Maxine. Leave Sophie be. She's clearly got issues. It's probably best to not get too involved. Easier said than done, though. But that night, I decided not to answer her call. I went to bed early, and when I woke up the next morning, I had about 20 missed calls and 50 texts from her. Oh my gosh! Some of them said she was so lonely and that I'd abandoned her. Then one said, if you don't pick up, then I will end it all. Okay, this was crazy. I immediately called her, but she wouldn't pick up. I rushed to her dorm, but nobody answered. I was panicking by then and bashing on the door, screaming, Sophie, open this darn door! but there was still no answer. I was terrified she'd done something bad, so I asked some students to help me bash down the door, and that's when she opened the door. I've never been so happy to see someone alive. I ran over to hug her, but she looked so annoyed. What are you doing here? You're making a scene, she said. What? I was so worried about you. You said you were going to... But she interrupted me and said... You need to get some sleep, Maxine. You seem insane. I couldn't believe it. After all those calls and texts, she was the insane one, not me. I didn't feel like yelling back, so I just left her. I needed some space. She tried to apologize to me over the next few days, but I didn't want to be around her. She even texted me saying if I wouldn't be her friend anymore, then life wasn't worth living. I was so tired of her threats, so I just ignored them. And then things got worse. A few days later, Damon and I were studying together when Sophie called me and said she was in the hospital. She told me that she had a brain tumor and they'd just done a biopsy to see if it was malignant or benign. I couldn't believe it. She asked me if I could pick her up and I said, of course, this was so scary. I told Damon and he just said, I think she's making it up, Maxine. How could she suddenly have a tumor? You guys just had a fight and suddenly she's in the hospital? Come on, think about it. I was shocked. Damon, how could you? You're such a jerk. Then I ran off and arrived at the hospital to find Sophie sitting outside wearing a hospital cap. She said her hair had been shaved off for the biopsy, and I asked to see the scar, but she wouldn't show me. She said she'd get a headache if she took it off. I was just glad that she was okay and gave her a ride home. We made up, and I decided to look after her for the day. She seemed so weak, I couldn't bear to see her suffering. I called Damon to tell him that he owed me an apology and told him about Sophie. And he just said, Oh, wow, okay, sorry, hope she's okay then. But then a few days later, he called me and said, Listen, Maxine, Sophie's a liar. She didn't have a biopsy. I bumped into her earlier and her cap fell off, and she has a full head of hair under there. No way it would grow back that fast. Why would she lie to me? I didn't get it. I needed to know the truth, so after class, I went to her dorm. She opened the door right away, and sure enough, she had all her hair intact. She probably knew Damon had told me, and so hadn't even bothered to keep up the lie. This made me furious. Straight away, I started shouting at her. Honestly, Sophie, what is wrong with you? Why would you pretend to be sick like that? Friends, don't do that. Sophie grabbed my hand and said, Maxine, I'm sorry. I was desperate. I only did it because I missed you and wanted you to care about me again. I took it too far, though. 
Please forgive me. Are you crazy? I screamed. I was worried sick about you. Are you sure there's not something wrong with you? Sophie started grinning in a weird way and said, The only thing wrong with me is that I'm in love with you, Maxine. She wouldn't let go of my hand, and I just stared in shock. What? What did you say? You heard me. I love you. Then she started to manically laugh and said, I've loved you since the day we first met. I knew you were following me, so I pretended to be in danger so you'd come rescue me. Even my ex-boyfriend was fake. He was just one of my friends pretending. Can't you see? I'm willing to do just about anything to get your attention. If that's not love, then what is? This couldn't be happening. I tried to stay as calm as possible and said, Listen, Sophie, I'm flattered. Really, I am. But I'm straight. I see you as just a friend, okay? But Sophie wouldn't give up. She grabbed my hands again and said, How do you know that? You didn't even try to love me yet. Just give me a chance and I'll show you what true love looks like. I tried to let go of her hands, but it was impossible. Sophie grabbed my hands tighter and tighter that it even began to hurt. She looked me in the eyes and, oh my god, it's like I couldn't recognize her anymore. She looked like a crazy person, like a psychopath. Then she began to speak in a really creepy tone. You can't get away from me. You're mine now. I was so scared. I needed to get out of here, so I pushed her really hard that she fell on the ground and I ran like a mad woman out of there until I was back in my dorm. Then I called the police, but by the time they reached her dorm, she was gone. I told them what happened and showed them a photo of her, and you won't believe it. Apparently, I wasn't the only girl Sophie had attacked. There were other girls, too. After that night, I was terrified. Everywhere I went, it felt like someone was watching me. Then one evening, after my shift at work, I was walking through the park back to my dorm, when I heard someone up ahead. I knew right away it was Sophie, but she wasn't alone. She was with some guys. They spotted me and started heading towards me. But I ran as fast as I could, and luckily the police were just outside the park and went in and arrested them. Sounds like a coincidence, right? Well, it wasn't. Sophie's not the only one who can fool people. I knew Sophie was stalking me. So I told the police, and together we created this plan to catch her. And voila, it worked. Sophie, if you're watching this, I wish you all the best. But let's not meet ever again. That's enough stalking for one lifetime. I was sitting on the couch watching a movie with my mom and dad, when suddenly, the door slammed shut, and we all turned our heads to see what happened. Yep, that's my big sister Taylor making an entrance. She slumped down on the couch and banged her feet on the coffee table. Then, as she scrolled through her phone, she looked up at us and huffed out, uh, why are you all gawping at me like I'm an animal in a zoo? Am I not welcome here? Flustered, my mom immediately replied, No, sweetie. We're all delighted to have you home. Then she turned to me. Anne, darling, go and get your sister a drink. I jumped up to my feet and did as mom asked. I know what you're thinking. Why is everyone letting Taylor get away with her Little Miss Rude routine? You see, after a huge argument with mom... She left home at 18 and didn't come back for seven whole years. Mom seemed so pleased to have her back, so I decided to ignore Taylor's attitude and just go along with it. That afternoon, Mom asked me to go to the grocery store with her so we could buy Taylor her favorite foods, as well as a welcome back gesture. Then we spent ages preparing this delicious meal. I excitedly rushed up to Taylor's room and knocked on the door. Taylor, dinner's ready! She shouted back, Go away! But it's hamburgers, and we got a special dessert! I replied, Poofed! I hate hamburgers, and there's no way I'm eating some sugar-laden dessert! I went downstairs and told Mom that she wasn't coming. Mom shrugged and tried to act like it was no big deal, but I could see the sadness in her eyes. Dad tried reassuring her by saying, She probably just needs time to settle in. Yeah, She's probably just tired, I added. Mom forced out a smile and thanked us both. Then she prepared a plate of food and asked me to bring it to Taylor. I knocked on her door and told her the food was outside. She shouted back at me. 
take it away. I don't want it. I left it outside of her room, but later on when mom went up to bed, she saw the untouched plate of food still there. She picked it up and she took it downstairs and made out like it was no big deal. She wasn't fooling me. I could tell that she was biting on her gum to stop the tears. When I was little, I idolized my feisty, beautiful older sister. I loved how she wore clashing colors, the cool ways in which she styled her hair, and her carefree nature. The problem was that she didn't seem to like me. All she ever did was call me a brat, slam her bedroom door in my face, and tell me to stay away from her. Seven years on, and I thought things would be different. She wasn't a teenager anymore. She was an adult. But nope. It seemed clear that Taylor hated me even more than ever. I don't know why. Didn't she view me as a proper sister because we had different dads? You see, my dad isn't her dad, as her dad left when she was a little girl. Then mom met my dad and had me. I don't know. I just couldn't figure out why she still disliked me so much. As the weeks went on, Taylor didn't seem to settle in at all. Instead, her behavior worsened. She played loud music until the early hours of the morning. She covered the house in her clothes, plates, cups, etc. She was the messiest person ever and never cleaned up after herself. One time, I came downstairs to see her sitting at the dinner table, munching on the sandwiches I'd made for school. Then, when I politely told her this, she snorted and said, They're gross anyway, so I'm doing you a favor. Then she took mom's car without asking her, and that meant she had to get the bus to work and ended up late. When mom talked to her about it, Taylor just smirked, threw the keys at her, said, you're out of gas, then walked off. Mom tried to keep calm and distracted herself by tidying up. So I tried hugging her, but she shrugged me off and told me to go away. It felt like Taylor could get away with everything, while I was the one getting snapped at for nothing. Still, Taylor must have been through a lot, right? Maybe she just needed some time to reconnect with mom again. Then peace would be restored to our household. Just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, they did. I was reading in the living room when I heard voices coming from outside. I went to check it out and saw mom and dad talking to our new neighbor. They sure looked friendly. Then Taylor appeared and grinning said, Making friends with the neighbor, are you mom? Mom flustered out, Taylor, this is Bill, my old classmate and our new neighbor. Isn't it a small world? So, your mom's age? Whoa, you don't look like it. Hang on, didn't you say you had a crush on some Bill? I see why. It's just a shame you rushed into remarrying, isn't it? Mom and Bill gave awkward looks, while Dad was gritting his teeth. Uh-oh, he didn't look happy. Lovely to see you, Bill. Mom muttered out before she pulled Dad and Taylor inside. Behind closed doors, she frowned at Taylor, but she just shrugged and left. This must have been playing on Dad's mind, as that evening I overheard him question Mom. Why did you never mention this Bill before? Honey, it was just a slight crush when I was a teenager. You know how it is. Yeah, sure. Dad scratched his head. Now I was stuck in the middle of all this tension, and it was all down to Taylor stirring the pot again. Then a couple of days later, Dad came home from work and immediately started freaking out. The bank called. Apparently I spent an obscene amount of money in a watch store. Was it you? Mom shook her head. I didn't know anything either. Then Taylor piped in. Speaking of buying stuff... We do need to get something for Bill's birthday. I mean, he did invite all of us, so it'd be rude not to. Uh-oh. I know Mom hadn't got round to telling Dad that Bill had invited the whole family to his party yet. Dad gave Mom a skeptical look and snarled, Oh, I see. You used my money to buy your high school sweetheart an expensive watch? Listen to yourself! You're being ridiculous! I'm not going to stand around and listen to you accuse me like this. Then Mom stormed off. I really wanted to tell them how this morning I'd seen Taylor lingering in their room, looking suspicious. But how could I bring this up when the atmosphere was so intense? 
I decided I needed to confront the source of the problem, Taylor. When it was just the two of us, I said to her, I know it was you. I saw you snooping around mom's stuff. She just shrugged and replied, Little Anne, seems you're smarter than you look. Yeah, I did it. So what? Why are you being so cruel? Mom and dad might split up because of you. To my shock, she grinned and she said, Well, that is my plan. Why should you get to play happy families when I'm stuck here without my dad? What? How could she be so selfish? I couldn't hold back my frustration anymore. How can you do this to mom? I won't let you get away with this. Is that so? And what exactly is a quiet mouse like you going to do about it? Then she shoved past me and walked off. I know I needed to tell mom, but this meant breaking her heart. <sighs> I was going to do it. I just needed to find a gentle way of telling her that her beloved daughter got a buzz out of ruining her life. But then, before I had a chance to figure this out, something terrible happened. The next day... I arrived home from school to find mom and dad in the kitchen. Dad had his arms folded and a stern look on his face, and mom was in tears as she sadly peered down at some papers on the table in front of her. Divorce forms. Wha- what happened? Anne, you have to believe me. I didn't cheat on your father. Then dad interrupted her. Stop lying. I can see it with my own eyes. Then he slammed a stack of photos onto the table. In the photos, Mom was kissing Bill in a cafe. Huh? This didn't make any sense. I don't understand. I didn't meet Bill yesterday. I met my friend Sandra. But Dad just got even more furious. Then he pulled his suitcase towards the door. Stop lying. I can see what happened clear as day. I can't trust you anymore. Then he left. Mom cried harder after that. I didn't know what to say or react. I wanted to believe Mom, but those photos told me differently. Suddenly, the door opened and Taylor strolled in, looked at Mom crying her heart out, and gave a delighted smirk, then went upstairs. That's right, Taylor! She must have something to do with this. So I kept an eye on her. As I passed her room, I heard her on the phone. And without a second thought, I went to find Mom and dragged her upstairs. Anyway, I owe you this time, dude. Yeah, those photos did the job. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Your Photoshop skills are brilliant. They look so real. <laughs> My mom froze. A second later, she pushed the door open. Then Mom looked at Taylor and mouthed the word, Why? Taylor burst out laughing, shrugged, then replied, It's payback for loving her. She pointed at me, More than you love me. I want you all to suffer for living happily together. Why does she have you both while I have nothing? Furious, Mom slapped Taylor across the face and shouted out, I'm ashamed of you, and I want you to leave right now. Taylor clutched her face and snarled back, With pleasure. I hate it here anyway. Then she stormed out of the room, slamming the door behind her. I hugged Mom, and we both started crying. My happy family had been destroyed, and all because my sister was jealous and thought Mom loved me more. It was all so crazy. Then, later that evening, Mom received a call. From the hospital. Mom's face dropped when she told me that Taylor had been in a car crash. We rushed to the hospital, and the doctor told us Taylor needed emergency surgery. But as she'd lost lots of blood, she needed a blood donation. The problem is that she had a rare blood type, but luckily, Mom had the same. So without any hesitation, Mom told the doctor to take as much blood as Taylor needed just to save her. After the blood donation, Mom didn't recover as fast as expected. Instead, she turned weak and needed medical care. So now, Taylor was in the surgery room, and Mom was in the intensive care unit. This was terrifying. What if I lost them both? I called Dad and spilled out everything that had happened to him, 
and he immediately rushed to the hospital. The wait was agonizing, but when the doctor came and told me they were both going to be okay and I could go and see Taylor, I cried with happiness. Seeing her lying there bruised and afraid, I saw a vulnerable side to her that I hadn't seen before. So I took her hand and told her what mom did for her. She looked embarrassed and turned away from me and muttered out how sorry she was for everything. After that, I visited them both every day. Dad came to the hospital too to check they were okay, but he waited outside of mom's room as he knew she was still mad at him. Finally, mom came home. Then a week later, Taylor was also discharged. We went to pick her up, and even though mom and her didn't talk, I could feel the warmth between them. That night, we were having a cozy dinner. Taylor coughed to clear her voice, then said, Guys, I want to say something. I know I've been a total brat, and I'm sorry. Mom, I thought you didn't love me because I was a reminder of your previous life, and I was ruining your new, happy family vibes. But now I realize how sacred the mother-daughter bond is. You never left me out. I left myself out. And Anne... I'm sorry I haven't been the big sis I should have been for you. I was jealous of you, but I was wrong to be that way. I hope you can both forgive me. Dad also apologized to Mom for misunderstanding her. We were all blubbering, and then we all hugged each other. We didn't need to say anything. Our actions were enough. We were family, and we loved each other. Families aren't always straightforward, but family is family through the good times and the bad. And they're always worth fighting for, regardless of how out of this world annoying they can be at times. Trust me, I know all about it. Hey, get up! Who are you? What are you doing in my room? What? Excuse me? Who are you? This is my room. This guy was totally crazy. He insisted this was his room, even though I picked the key up from reception just two hours ago. What do you mean you got the key? I checked in first and just left the key at the reception desk to go out and buy some stuff. Whatever. I like the beach view here, so I'm staying. Unbelievable! Then he pulled out his phone and called reception. Okay, so I'm Liana, and I'm in the tropical paradise of Bali. My dream vacation wasn't off to a great start, thanks to this Charles guy trying to kick me out of my perfect beach view bungalow. Poof! Okay, now listen. They admit they gave you the wrong key. He pointed at his phone. Now, go back to reception, get the right one, and they'll probably give you a free treatment in the spa or something as compensation. No chance. I frowned at him. I like this room. How about you leave and go and enjoy a free spa treatment or whatever? Hell no! He growled at me. I paid for it, so I'm staying put. After that, we continued to quarrel until I felt a pain in my chest. And the next thing I knew, I'd fainted. Ugh. I guess it was just far too hot here for arguing. He put a pillow under my head and said, Miss, you can stop pretending now. Wake up! I had a feeling he was staring at me, but I didn't move. Fine. Keep on playing your little pretend games. But I'm not leaving this room either. Ah, oh, silence. He must have given up. But then I felt a weight next to me on the bed. Without a second thought, I opened my eyes and leaped off the bed. Oh, turns out he wasn't trying to harm me. Instead, he was just sitting on the side and opening his laptop. Oops. He rolled his eyes, told me to go, and then started typing away. I swished my hair back, then said, In your dreams? Now, I'm off to enjoy this sunny day. When I come back, I don't want to see your face. After that, I left, and spent the rest of the day relaxing on the beach. Bali was just so beautiful. At night, I returned to the bungalow, and was ready to fall into bed. Hello! I said as I walked inside. Whoa, he wasn't there. I'd won the Battle of the Bungalows. 
I used the last of my energy jumping up and down on the bed and singing out, He left, I win, he's a loser, I'm a winner. Then I curled up into bed and started to drift off. Smash! I jolted upright. The window had been broken, and lingering at the foot of my bed was a tall, dark figure. I screamed at the top of my lungs, but they lunged forward and covered my mouth with their hands. Shut up, they whispered in my ear, then pulled their mask off. It was Charles. Confused, I blurted out, What the? Why did you break the window? Quick, grab your things. I pushed him off me and sat there with folded arms. Nice try, but if this is your way of kicking me out, it won't work. I'm not leaving. Suddenly, another man entered the room. Charles placed his mask back on and quickly grabbed the lamp from the bedside table and threw it at the man. I grabbed my bag in a panic while Charles took something from his backpack and then he led me out of the room. We took the back road out of the bungalow and headed into the forest. Where are we going and who was he? I questioned, but he remained silent. Say something. What's going on? Shut up for a minute. Now, I'll take you to the airport to leave this island. Charles grumbled. It was pitch black, and I was trampling through the forest in flip-flops. Ugh! Then, to make it even worse, I tripped over a branch and busted my knee. Great! He lowered his back and said, Get on. I was a bit surprised at first. Hmm. Maybe he wasn't as mean as I first thought. After a while, he decided we should rest in the forest till dawn. Charles fell asleep the second he hit the ground. I couldn't sleep, and then I thought back on the incident in the bungalow. Thinking about it, I remembered Charles grabbing something from his bag. So I crept over to him and slowly reached for his pocket to see what it was. Suddenly, he grabbed my arm tightly. Charles, let me go! I hissed out. My arm started to hurt. Ouch! Look, this is a dangerous business I'm in, he said as he let go of me. I'm trying to keep us both safe. Okay, I could really see worry in his eyes, so I muttered out, fine, then rubbed my arm. After a ridiculously uncomfortable night of zero sleep, he nudged me at dawn and told me to start walking. He took my hand and led me forward. I guess it was nice that he was so focused on protecting me, but, er, why did he keep looking at his phone? Um, are we lost? I asked. He kept his eyes on the screen and shook his head. Then he led me into the other direction, and then another. Yep, we were so lost. After what felt like hours of walking in circles, I slumped down on a rock and pulled a water bottle out of my bag. Let's just find the hotel, I suggested. No, we can't. Going back is more dangerous. But, fine. Can you at least tell me why we're sweating our butts off out here? I suppose I've implemented you, he sighed out. Still, you have to take this to your grave. I won't tell. Promise. They're after this. He took a USB stick out of his pocket. The president of the company I work for is carrying out illegal activities, and this is proof. Whoa, you're like James Bond! I smiled as I passed him the water bottle. Hardly. He laughed. Then he thanked me as he took the water and drank half of it without hesitation, then offered me the rest. He told me he was working for another company and had been sent in to investigate. So, you're betraying the president? I asked skeptically. Kind of. Yes. By the way, I know you just wanted a nice vacation, but I've accidentally dragged you into this mess. I'm so sorry. Don't worry. I guess this is kind of exciting. But this is the summer getaway with the most insects I've ever had. I swatted a mosquito away. I heard him laugh, but hang on. Why was he all blurry? I slurred out, uh, is your he- head heavy? Then I saw him faint in front of me, and a few seconds later, 
the world turned black. I flickered open my eyes. My head hurt. I was tied to a chair. And so was Charles. There were some scary-looking guys staring at us. Oh no, this couldn't be good. One man walked over to Charles and in a stern tone said, Charles, hand over the USB, and no one gets hurt. I don't know anything about a USB, he muttered out. I don't want to give out threats with her here. But if you insist, one of the bodyguards walked towards me, grabbed my hair, and pulled it backward. If you don't find value in her life, just keep it and watch her die. Stop! Leave her out of this! I don't have the USB. I dropped it somewhere in the forest. Then he turned to me. I'm so sorry I got you into this. The man sneered. Stop being so emotional, Charles. It doesn't suit you. I was shaking with fear as the man pulled something out from his back and pointed at me. Last chance, Charles? He shouted out, No! It's in her pocket! He must have snuck it in there when we were in the forest. Did he really believe that I would escape and expose the evidence? Then... <laughs> Cut! Good job, guys! We should be nominated for an Oscar award after this! I joked while the men kneeled down and untied me. About time, I said snidely as I took the USB out of my pocket and began spinning it with my fingers. I peered down at Charles and smirked. Thanks for protecting me and everything, but it turns out I have what I needed. What? Who are you? Charles asked in shock. So I put him out of his misery and told him everything. Yeah, I'm the daughter of the company's president, the same said company that he stole top secret information from. My father asked me to go and find him. The wrong reception key was a setup, and my water bottle has a mild sedative in it. You don't understand. What your father did was illegal, he insisted. I rolled my eyes. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say. I started walking away. Please, see for yourself. Look at the USB. I chewed on my lip. Poor Charles. He was no match for me or my father. Soon, we'd all be on a plane and flying back to the U.S., and then he would pay for what he did. Well, that was a job well done, so now it was time to relax with a glass of champagne. After all, I deserved it. One simple extraction back home, and my father's company would be saved, and Daddy's little girl would get a pat on the shoulder for yet another job well done. Hooray! But I must say, I kinda pity Charles. Being a pawn in somebody else's game, he was really nice and clever too, but not enough to see all this coming, apparently. I took the USB out of my pocket and stared at it. But what secrets did my father keep? We didn't have anything fishy, right? My father did talk a lot about how hard he worked and how honestly he conducted himself. So why did he specifically ask me not to peek at the file? Hmm... A little look wouldn't hurt, right? I know, I know. It's not very good of me to disobey my father, but come on, I'm his daughter. I'm set to take over from him anyways. So consider this a double check, eh? Just to be sure. <sighs> I regret looking at that file. I truly do, as the truth was unbearable. It turns out... My father had been lying to me from the very beginning, so Charles was actually telling the truth. He was indeed stealing dirty secrets from my father to bring it to the light. Ironic, isn't it? I laughed at him for being so gullible and believed the lies about my father's company, while it was me who got lied to. These truths were hard to swallow. I bore the legacy of a lifetime of scamming and cheating. No, I didn't want to live like that. It was just so wrong. As I delivered both the USB and Charles to my father, I knew what I needed to do. So I held the USB out to my father and said, Daddy, I looked at it, so I now know everything. 
Please stop. Liana, so your father turned himself in and will be in jail for a while. So what do you plan on doing with the company? I was quiet for a moment. This was a big question. Should I continue with my father's business or put an end to it once and for all? I thought back to the day when I confronted my father. But princess, I did it all for you. It's your legacy. I don't want to live with dirty money, dad. You've always been my hero, but now I'm just ashamed of you. His face fell, and I saw the sadness in his eyes. Seeing my father like that was the worst feeling in the world. Then it looked like he realized something. My father quietly nodded, handed me the president of the company seal, and sadly left the room. I'm afraid that I would repeat my father's mistake. So, taking a deep breath... I looked the journalist directly in the eyes and assertively said, After careful consideration, I've decided to close the company. After the conference, I was on my way out of the building when Charles caught up with me and asked, Well, Liana, what will you do now? I shrugged. I don't know. I suppose anything is possible. Although, I do need a place to stay first. I can't return to mine. I can't bear it. Well, um, if you'd like, you could stay with me. Charles smiled at me. Yeah, I'd like that. Then grinning, I added, as long as you don't try to kick me out this time, or drag me through a forest. I hate what my father did, but in the end, he did own up to his crimes and is paying the price. As for me, I was just going to take one day at a time and see where life took me. And if that just so happened to involve a certain James Bond wannabe, then so be it. My name's Maria, and I'm an introvert. Large groups of people, super loud parties, and being the center of attention... No thanks. I know I don't sound like the kind of girl who goes out and drinks a lot, yet I'm often drunk. Can you believe it? And turns out, drunk me is a complete nightmare. Cringe. It all started a few years ago when my best friend Kimberly had a pajama party for her birthday. I was nervous about it, as there were girls going that I didn't know. But I didn't want to let my bestie down, so I went along. We had dinner first, deep pan pizza, and cheese fries. Yum. Then suddenly, my behavior turned weird. I couldn't stop laughing at every little thing. Then I ran around the house pretending to be an airplane and hung my head out of the window and started waving to complete strangers who passed by. I don't remember any of this though, but one of the girls videoed me and uploaded it to her social media page. The next day at school, everyone was pointing and laughing at me. Turns out the video had gone viral. I just couldn't figure out why I'd acted like that. It was so out of character for me. Then things got worse, way worse. Once I'd finished my lunch in the school canteen and 15 minutes later, as I walked out of there, I began to feel lightheaded. A girl who often gave me dirty looks passed me and I slurred out, what are you looking at? Then I slapped her. This girl saw red, so she hit me back. A teacher had to pull us apart and I was sent to the principal's office. He accused me of being drunk and summoned my mom. As you can imagine, my mom was furious. She grounded me for a whole month and cut off all my pocket money as she thought I'd use them to buy alcohol. I told her I hadn't drunk any alcohol, but she didn't believe me. I was so confused. I didn't understand why these weird things were happening. I just wanted a quiet life. So why did my personality suddenly change? Then it's my younger sister's birthday. About 10 minutes after eating a piece of fruitcake, I suddenly began to sweat and felt dizzy. I started to laugh for no reason, chatted out a load of nonsense, then fell off my seat. Everyone was staring at me with confusion. Finally, my mom realized that something was up with me. She took me to see loads of specialists, but they were all clueless. Then, finally, a specialist gave me a diagnosis. Turns out, I have a rare condition known as autobrewery syndrome. This causes the digestive system to automatically endogeneously ferment, 
Then, when I consume sugars or starches, these produce alcohol, which make the body drunk. To curb such sudden bouts of drunkenness, I had to drastically cut down on sugary and starchy foods and take medication. As you can imagine, not being able to eat these types of foods was not fun at all. I like candy and chocolate, and I love pretzels, which also happen to be one of the most starch-filled foods out there. Talk about a bummer. Over two years of living with this condition, I've gotten used to it. I've discovered food substitutes, such as veggie fries and paleo bread. It can be a hassle in restaurants, as I hate being seen as the awkward customer with a long list of demands. But it was always not that bad, since I eventually knew how to control my sugar input. So I guess I learned how to be a normal teen and lead a fairly normal life. Well, at least until I ended up with a massive crush on a cute boy from my class called Scott. Being the shy girl I am, I can't imagine ever telling him how I felt. But I figured that my rare syndrome could help me do just that. So at Kimberly's birthday party, when Scott passed me a piece of gooey chocolate cake, I took it from him and ate it. I soon started to feel more confident. And before long, I dared to request songs and confidently sing in front of people. I chose to sing the Harry Styles song, Adore You, and I dedicated it to my amazing bestie, Kimberly. But while I sang it, I looked over at Scott. Later that night, Scott messaged me to ask if I was home yet. Then we talked more. But the next day, when Scott called out to me in the corridor, I only dared to shyly greet him with an awkward smile. Lack of yeast, I returned to my usual shy girl self. Then, during my English lit lesson, the teacher grouped me with Scott to perform a Shakespeare classic. He was playing Romeo and asked if I wanted to play Juliet. Oh, for a shy, quiet, and stuttering girl like me, performing in front of a whole class seemed unimaginable. But I didn't want anyone else from our group playing Juliet, so I plucked up the courage to say yes. So, before every rehearsal and, of course, the official performance, I ate some candies. The performance was very successful, and afterward, Scott asked me to go to his friend's birthday party with him. I was super worried, but then I thought if I got a little drunk off food, everything would be fine. During the party, I was so nervous and longed for the confidence that I ate a bit too much candies and fruits, as I often did. I usually knew how much to eat so I could remain in control of my actions, but my nerves caused me to overdo it. The rest of the night was a blur, but Scott told me I was laughing like crazy, walking unsteadily, and I even wrapped my arms around his friend Freddy's neck and kissed him on the cheek, which caused Freddy's girlfriend to slap me in front of everyone. Even though Scott was mad at me, he still took me home. I tried slurring out an apology to him, but I was so drunk I ended up vomiting all over his lap. Talk about embarrassing. Still, being the sweet guy he is, he walked me inside and my mom took me straight to bed. Then she explained my condition to him. When we next spoke, he was really understanding about it and told me that he liked me just the way I am and that I didn't need to eat bad foods to feel more confident. I know I was wrong to abuse my condition. The drunk, confident version of me is a reckless mess, but I don't want to be her anymore. It's hard sometimes, especially as I find social events so awkward and uncomfortable. But I know I need to follow the doctor's instructions to manage my condition. Now I'm trying to build up my self-esteem instead of relying on false bursts of confidence that starchy foods give me. I know it isn't going to be easy, but now I realize that there are plenty of people out there that like me for me.